So, got to this point here now. Um, what I'm going to do is I just want to show you um, just the finer points of getting this little area of tree here. As you can see, I've done the background trees, and now I'm going to work on these trees on the water line here. Um, I'm just going to show you the techniques involved, the stages, the three stages, um, and what brushes I'm using, and my thoughts behind mixing the colours. Um, so let's have a look at that now. Okay, so we've got this blocking stage here. That is dry, that's just had one coat of, in this case, I blocked in oil, but normally I would do it in acrylic. Makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. But that is, I would say, uh, it's supposed to be blocked in in a middle tone. It's probably more like the highlight areas. Uh, in fact, I'll show you a photograph of the reference material there. Uh, you can see that it's probably a little bit light, could have been a little bit dark, but it doesn't matter. I'd rather be too light than too dark. But now I'm going to show you, and we're just going to work on this area here. Normally I'd work from the background to the foreground. Um, I'm just going to show you on this bit here how I work. And I'm going to show you how I mix the paints and also what brushes to use and the techniques involved. So we're really going to zoom in and try and get this, try and get this um, so that you can see all the intricate little details. So let's have a look now. Right, so this here is the area we're going to work on. Um, I've put the reference photograph alongside so you can see roughly what I'm doing. Um, now in the photograph, obviously you've got a few areas on here that are lighter with the highlights but you've also got the shaded areas the dark areas as well so first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to put in a line a water line here just so that i can see which is which i mean it's sort of fairly clear at the moment but generally you do tend to get a darker edge on the water there anyway so looking at the palette here it's pretty dark but it's not black i'm going to use some liquid and just ivory black, and then with the ivory black, just some yellow. Now that is cadmium yellow light. So ivory black, cadmium yellow light, maybe a little bit more. And that's giving us a very dark green now. So let's put that water line in now. Just holding the ruler, getting it roughly level. I'm just gonna get that edging, just roughly, just a nice straight edge. Now what I would do normally is do the whole waterline all the way along, but I'm just going to concentrate on that one tree. I just want to show you how I'm going to do this one bit. Okay, so what we need to do now, the first thing to do is to put in the darker shades because with oil you work from dark to light. So we've, as I say, supposedly blocked in in middle tone. Now it's time to do the dark colours. So here we have the Tree and Texture Series 32 by Rosemary & Co. And this is the size 3 8 of an inch. Now one of the benefits to using this brush is putting on those darker areas. We don't want them to be, we don't want lots of large darker areas and we don't want it to be too flat. We want to start putting detail in straight away. And this is going to help us do that. And basically what happens is, because as you see, you've got that chamfered edge. When you press against the panel, it spreads out like that. And it gives you lots of tiny little spots. And I'll show you that now. So might as well just go straight in with the color that we've got there. Now, first things first is to pick out the darkest color or perhaps not quite the darkest color. The darkest color is right, probably near the waterline there. We want a mid, a mid green. So I'm gonna mix that up while I've got it here, just with the ivory black and the yellow. Could also use sap green, but that's given us a mid green there. I would say it's equal measures of black and the yellow. So here we have the brush. Now what I'm going to do is 
start putting in those darker areas. I'm also going to mix some liquid in with it as well. So as you can see, when I press against the panel, what it's doing is it's putting lots and lots of very small dots on there. So one brush mark is giving us lots of little marks. Rather than if we used a brush like this, which is the Series 302 size 8, doing this, picking up the same amount of paint, can you see it's more of a, a, a blob of paint. I mean, it's smooth on the canvas. None of this is stippled at all, but it's not giving me quite the right look. I'm after more of a stippled look like that. So we'll just get the excess off. Back to the coma brush, and then I'm just going to go over the whole this whole area with this brush. Right, so we've got some of that in now. We can put in some more of the dark areas where you've got more more of the uh, sort of solid dark areas, especially near the lower edge of this tree and probably in this part here. So back in with that black. That will give us that nice green again. So you can really see just how easily you can start to get that to look like a tree with very little effort. Now in the photograph, there is uh, another tree in the foreground and the branch sort of in the shade just comes down and covers that. So we can't really see what's behind, but we're just going to uh, make that bit up really, just by using some of the rest of the, the um, <clears throat> tree that you can see. We'll just get it looking similar. So first of all, Let's go and find a brush that is going to work. Um, so this is a series 2055 size one, once again, Rosemary & Co. Um, it's not super new. I'll show you a new one now. So there we are. Uh, doesn't make a great deal of difference, to be honest. It's probably, probably only used that in three or four pictures. Either one would give you pretty much the same results. Now what this allows me to do is get a really nice, sharp, um, brush mark. So all I'm going to do is m try and mix up not the very lightest colour but close to it um, and that's a much cooler brighter colour than even this blocking layer here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the corner of the brush. So if, if the panel was here where my finger is I'd be pushing just the corner against it to get a small spot like that. So I'm turning the brush more horizontal. Let's get a bit more paint on the brush. And we're going to try and just get very small little marks on the panel. Now it might be worth turning the brush over if you feel that the um, the brush stroke's not quite right, and use the other the other side because the other side to me looks a little bit less ragged, and that's going to help give us a better edge. So there you can see that's the result we're getting. It's quite, well, each brush stroke is probably putting on two or three, maybe four little brush marks. And we're just going to go over some of the areas where the leaves are most concentrated, making sure that we leave out the areas where it is not quite so light.
So that just goes to show you that you can do the same, or get the same result using different techniques. And really, it's just a case of finding what works for you. Experiment with the different brushes that you use, the consistency of the paints that you use, and um, practice makes perfect.